In this video, we will cover the generation of lambda in SPSS, the generation of Summers D in SPSS, the generation of a scatter plot in Pearson's R in SPSS. To follow along in this demo, you will need the following access to SPSS software, the SAT 2016 PA data file in SPSS.SAV format. Before we begin the demo, let's briefly review. If your level of measurement of your independent variable is nominal, and the level of measurement for your dependent variable is also nominal, the appropriate measure of association is lambda. If the level of measurement of your independent variable is nominal, the level of measurement of your dependent variable is ordinal, you can also use lambda. If your level of measurement for the independent variable and level of measurement for the dependent variable are both ordinal, Summers D is an appropriate statistic. If your level of measurement for your independent variable and level of measurement for your dependent variable are both continuous, Pearson's R is an appropriate statistic. Please note this list is not comprehensive as we have not paired nominal with continuous, ordinal with continuous. Once again, I'm using the SAT 2016PA.SAV data file. This is our modified file that includes the composite average three category SAT score. To calculate lambda in SPSS, we're going to use the cross-tab menu. To get there, we're going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross-Tabs. Once again, we need to delineate which variable is our independent variable in the columns and which variable is our dependent variable in the rows. For demonstration here, I'm going to use region, which is a nominal variable, as my independent variable in the columns. I'm going to use the composite average three category variable as my dependent variable in the rows. If you click OK, you'll get your cross tabulation, but in this case, I want the additional statistic for lambda. To obtain lambda, I'm going to click statistics. I'm going to check the box under nominal that says lambda. Once you click OK, it will reproduce the cross tabulation. Here we can see that we have our region variable in the columns cross tab with our three category composite average SAT score in the rows. We get an additional table here that produces our actual values of lambda. We're going to ignore everything but the first column. That is, we're not going to use the asymptotic standard error, the approximate T or the approximate significance level. We're only interested in evaluating the value of lambda. Note here that we get three different measures of lambda, or three different calculations of lambda. We get a symmetric calculation. We get a calculation where the composite average three category is the dependent variable, and we get a calculation where region is a dependent variable. Once again, back in our discussion in the lecture, we noted that lambda is a directional measure, so it does matter when we're calculating it by hand which measure we put in the rows and which measure we put in the columns. SPSS provides both calculations for you. In this instance, we believe that region might influence performance on the SAT scores, so SAT scores is our dependent variable. In this table down here, we get the actual measures of lambda. We're only going to focus on the first three values that appear in this table. That is, we're going to ignore the second calculation for the Goodman and Kruskal statistic. We're also going to ignore the columns for asymptotic standard error, approximate T, and approximate significance level. Our main focus here is on our values of lambda. Note from the lecture that lambda is a directional measure, so it does matter the way the table is oriented for the calculation. To calculate it by hand, we always have to put the dependent variable in the rows and the independent variable in the columns. SPSS produces three different calculations for you, assuming that there is no independent dependent, assuming that one variable is the dependent and the other variable is the dependent. Because our hypothesis suggests that region might influence SAT performance, we're going to focus on the composite average 3 cat as a dependent variable. Here we see that we have a lambda value of 0 0.209. This implies that prediction is improved by knowing which region of the state a school is located in on the school's SAT performance. 0 0.209 suggests there is a weak correlation and that there is a relationship, at least weakly, between region of the state and SAT performance. To demo Summers D, I need two ordinal variables. 
We do not have two ordinal variables in our data set right now. So to demonstrate, I'm going to recode the reading average into a six category ordinal variable and the math average into a six category ordinal variable. This will allow us to evaluate whether or not a school's reading average is related or correlated with its math average for ordinal variables. To do that, I'm going to go to transform, recode into different variables. Here I'm going to recode the reading average into reading average 6cat. I'm going to specify all the new values. First, my lowest value through the range of 399 is going to become a 1. My range of 400 to 449 is going to become a 2. My range of 450 through 499 is going to be a 3. My range of 500 through 549 is going to become a 4. My range of 550 through 599 will become a 5. And my range of anything greater than 600 will become a 6. Let's check the frequencies of our new variable using descriptive statistics frequencies. So here we can see that we have a pretty good distribution of values. We've got 70 values that are in category 1, 64 values in category 2, 243 values in category 3, 238 values in category 4, 29 values in category 5, and just 2 values in category 6. Let's recode the math average using the same scale. Now that we have both of our variables recoded, let's create the cross tab and ask for Summers D. To do that, we're going to go back to the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics cross tabs. In this case, it doesn't matter which variables in the rows and the columns. So I'm going to put Reading Average in the rows, Math Average in the columns. I'm going to click the Statistics box, in this case, Ask for Summers D. Here we have our cross tabulation, and down here we have our directional measure. We're going to once again ignore everything that's not in the first column. We're going to ignore asymptotic standard errors. We're going to ignore approximate t and approximate significance. Here, once again, like we did with lambda, SPSS gives us the symmetric value, the reading average 6cat as the dependent, and the math average 6cat as the dependent. In this case, we're going to focus on the symmetrical measure since we don't think that there's an independent dependent variable in this case. Here we find that the value of Summers D is 0.821. We know from our previous discussion that the further a value is from zero, that is, the further a value is closer to negative one or positive one, the stronger the relationship. Hence, a 0.821 in this instance tells us there's a fairly strong relationship between a school's performance on reading and a school's performance on math when measured by our six category ordinal variable. You can even see in the cross tab why this relationship is so strong. There are very few schools that perform poor on one measure and poor on the other. There's a pretty consistent diagonal line that says that low scores on one tend to be paired with low scores on the other, medium scores in one area tend to be correlated with medium scores on another, and high scores on one area tend to be correlated with high scores on the other. So once again, we see from our Summers D value a fairly strong relationship between reading average and math average when measured on our six category ordinal scale. Finally, let's take a look at how to get Pearson's R. Let's first go to our chart build to look at a scatter plot. In this instance, I'm going to use the actual numbers for the reading average and math average. Since we don't have a strong expectation of which is the dependent and independent variable, it doesn't matter which axis we put each variable on. Here we can see how our schools rank, and when we look at the continuous measures of reading average and math average, 
and we can guess that we're going to find a pretty strong correlation between the two variables. To get that correlation, let's go to Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate. We're going to select our two variables, the actual reading average, the actual math average, and ensure that our Pearson's correlation coefficient is checked. Here we get a correlation table. We're going to ignore the significance levels for now and focus just on the Pearson correlation coefficient. The way to view the correlation table is that when we look at this cell entry, which is a one, this is reading average correlated with reading average. Any variable correlated with self will be one. Similarly, this bottom uh, sort of cell on the bottom uh, right hand side is math average correlated with math average, which is also one. You'll notice here that on the other diagonal, we have a symmetrical relationship. So we see here that math average correlated with reading average is at 0.96. And up here, reading average correlated with math average is a 0.96. Once again, because the correlation coefficient is symmetrical, regardless of which variable is on the independent and which variable is on the dependent side, we get a table that basically has a mirror image along the diagonal. We see here the mirror image of the 1,1. One, one, and the mirror image here of the 0 0.96, 0 0.96. So like we found with Summers D, we know that Pearson's R has the same interpretation, such that the further the Pearson's R value is away from zero, that is the closer it is to negative one or positive one, the stronger the relationship. Hence, the 0.96 tells us that reading scores and math scores, as we see in the scatter plot above, are strongly correlated. This concludes our short video on how to get Lambda, Summers D, Pearson's R, and a scatter plot in SPSS.